Hi, second grade scientists. Welcome to Science with Mrs. Miller. Today, in lesson six of our unit on structures and properties of matter, we will be talking about liquids. Do you remember how earlier in our unit we learned about liquids? Do you remember, do liquids have their own shape? Thumbs up or thumbs down? What do you think? Thumbs down, right? Yeah, liquids do not have their own shape. Liquids take the shape of their container. That's right. So that's the concept that we'll be exploring today. Let's start by, talk, by reading part of this book, What is Liquid? It's written by Lynn Peppas. Okay, I've taken an excerpt out of this book that I thought you would find interesting. The heading says, a tall glass of matter. Did you drink a glass of matter today? Did you? I'm drinking a glass of matter right now. Well, a bottle of matter anyway. If you drank water, milk, or another liquid, then the answer is yes. Liquid is matter that flows. This means you can pour it. This girl pours milk on her cereal. Milk is a liquid. No shape of its own. A liquid does not have its own shape. A liquid takes the shape of the container holding it. This is why the same amount of liquid looks different in a tall, thin glass than in a short, wide glass. Just take a look here at this honey. Here we have honey in a bear-shaped container. So the honey takes the, share, the shape of a bear. And here we have honey in a regular jar, so the honey takes the shape of the jar. Now this what do you think question, we're going to come back to that a little bit later. But first, I have a question for you. Have you ever heard the word volume? What is volume? Maybe you've, maybe you've used that word before in this sense. Like maybe you're driving in the car. I don't know about you, but this is one of my favorite songs. Maybe you're driving in the car and this song comes on. And you start dancing and you say to your mom or dad, turn up the volume. I love this song. I always turn up the volume when that song comes on. But that's not the type of volume that I mean today. In science, volume can mean the amount of space something takes up. We can measure liquid volume by using a beaker. These are both beakers, they're two different types of beakers. Or a measuring cup. Now in just a moment, I'm going to show you two different containers that both have liquid in them. And I want you to think about which has more liquid. So let me show you. All right, so here we have two different containers of liquid. We have a glass and, well, a drinking glass, I should say, and we have a glass bowl. And I dyed the liquid in both blue just to make it easier to see, but it's in fact just water. Now, if you take a look at the water line of both of them, which one has a higher water line? The drinking glass or the glass bowl? Call it out in three, two, one. Yes, the drinking glass has a higher water a uh, higher water line. You see the water line is all the way up here where the the uh, glass bowl is it's all the way down here. So my next question for you is which has more volume or which has more liquid in it? The drinking glass or the glass bowl? Think for a moment. And then I want you to turn and tell somebody next to you. If you're in school, turn and tell somebody sitting next to you. If you're at home, turn and tell somebody in your house. 
or your imaginary lab partner. Ready, set, turn and talk. Which has more liquid or more volume and what makes you think that? One, two, three, eyes on me. Okay, now, how can we prove that one of these containers has more liquid than the other? Do you remember that song that scientists use? Yeah, that song, I like to prove it, prove it. I like to prove it, prove it. I like to prove it, prove it. I like to prove it. So let's prove it. If you think, First, let me ask you, if you think that the glass bowl has more water, I want you to raise your hand. Raise it high. If you think that the drinking glass has more water, I want you to raise your hand. Raise it high. Okay. Now, how can we prove which container has more liquid? Is there a certain tool that we could use? I'll give you a hint. We referred to these tools earlier in our lesson. So now, touch your head when you have an idea in your head. How can we prove which has more volume or which has more liquid in it? Now turn and tell somebody next to you. Ready, set, turn and talk. One, two, three, eyes on me. If you said that we could use either a beaker or a measuring cup to measure how much volume of liquid there is in each container, give yourself a pat on the back. You are really paying attention. Excellent. So you're right. We could use either a beaker or a measuring cup. I happen to have a measuring cup here. So I'm going to put it in the middle. Okay, and now, oops. and now, let me first pour the liquid from my glass bowl here into the measuring cup. There we go. All right, as you can see here, I'll bring it a little closer to the camera. As you can see, the liquid measures at about 300 milliliters. Okay, so remember that 300 milliliters. So now let's see if the glass has more or less than 300 milliliters, the drinking glass. Let's pour this in. Oh, what do you notice? Let me bring it up close. That's right, 300 milliliters. They have the same amount of water, the same volume of liquid. So that was sort of a trick question because in fact, the volume of liquid between the drinking glass and the glass bowl is exactly equal to each other. So explain to the person next to you how that could be because, you know, when I'm looking at these two, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking that the, the drinking glass looks like it has more water than the glass bowl. So explain to the person next to you how that could be that the drinking glass and the glass bowl have the same volume of liquid. Ready, set, turn and talk. One, two, three, eyes on me. So I'm wondering if you were thinking what I'm thinking. We know that liquid takes the shape of its container. So when it's in a tall, narrow glass, the water line is up higher, right? But when it's in a flat, rounder bowl, the water line is down lower. But it still has the same amount of liquid, the same volume of liquid. Say that word again, volume. That's right, it has the same volume of liquid. 
All right, great job thinking through that science activity, scientists. So now we need to put some of our thinking down on paper. You're going to find this activity sheet in your Google Classroom if you're at home. If you are in school, your teacher will hand it to you. So if you don't already have this activity sheet in front of you, pause the video here, make sure to get it, and then come back and unpause so that we can continue. Okay, so let's review this sheet together. It says, Second Grade Science, Unit 1, Lesson 7. Which is actually incorrect, I just realized. This is really Lesson 6. It will be fixed on your sheet, don't worry. So, um, and the directions say, draw a picture of two of the containers that were used. Draw what the liquid looked like inside of each container. Then you're going to answer this question. Although the liquid looked different in each container, did each container have the same volume of liquid? How do you know? Okay, so we just talked about that. So make sure that you write your thinking down on that um, part of this activity sheet. Then once you're finished with that part, you're going to turn to the back and we're going to do some imagining. I want you to imagine what would happen if you spill the liquid on the floor. Then I want you to answer this question. What shape is liquid? Oh, it's another trick question. So now I'm going to ask you to go and pause this video and then you'll draw your two containers and you'll answer the three questions on this activity sheet. I will leave this here so that you can clearly see the two containers to help you to draw them. Happy drawing and happy writing. Once you're finished, come back and press play again because we have more fun science learning to do. Welcome back everyone. Now it's time for you to become an engineer. So quickly put on your engineer hat because we're going to do some designing. Whoops, okay, there we go. You are going to engineer your very own water park. Who here has ever been to a water park? Raise your hand. Water parks are just so much fun, aren't they? So in just a moment, you're going to draw to design your own water park. Now, it could be a simple water park like this one. This is Chesapeake Beach Water Park. Or it could be more elaborate like this one. Or this one. Or even this one. Oh my goodness. Has anybody here ever been to Splish Splash? So much fun. So you'll get to decide how you want to des design your water park. Now, again, this sheet can be found in your Google Classroom if you're learning from home. And if you're learning in school, your teacher will give it to you. Let's read the directions so we could get started on this exciting project. The directions say, as we demonstrated in our science activity, liquids take the shape of their container. It is time for you to be an engineer. Design your own water park and then write to tell what shape the water takes in two parts of your water park. Okay, so let me show you what mine looks like. I really, really had fun with this project. This was the water park that I drew. You could see here, this is my swirly water slide. It goes like this and it it lands in a star-shaped pool. The water flows into a star-shaped pool. And then we have a heart-shaped wave pool. And then we have a lazy river. Now, I chose two parts of my water park to write about. I decided to write about my swirly water slide and my star-shaped pool. So listen to what I wrote. 
As the water flows through the swirly water slide, it takes the shape of the slide. The water in the star-shaped pool takes the shape of its container, a star. Okay, and you'll notice I highlighted some words and phrases that I thought were important to use in explaining the way that the water takes the shape of its container. You might want to use these words yourself. Words like flows, takes the shape of, or takes the shape of its container. Okay, thank you so much for learning with me today. You can keep this video up and paused so that you can review the highlighted words that I use. It can help you to think about what you might want to write. Enjoy engineering your water park. I can't wait to see them. Bye-bye, everyone.